It's Moose FM, the best variety in the North. Greg Hanna joining you on this Sunday. And we have two very special guests with us today, the mayor of Yellowknife and also Lydia Bardak, who has done some great work in the community as well. Thank you both for joining me. Good afternoon. So I'd like to start off with talking about the headcount that was recently conducted here in the city. I know the uh, results haven't been made official yet, but are you able to share any uh, insights into what the city learned during that process? Well, I think one of the things that uh, we were striving to do with the point in time count, and to, to answer your first question, the, the results haven't been compiled and presented in a report yet, so I'm, I'm not uh, aware of the data that it revealed. Uh, but one of, the, one of the things we were after was, I think, a more in-depth analysis of some of the issues that uh, homeless people in Yellowknife are facing. Um, certainly the, the numbers are important, but just as important is, uh, you know, where people are coming from, how they found their way onto the streets, where they are actually staying. Is it a shelter? Is it outdoors? Is it couch surfing? Is it, you know, what, what have you? Uh, so that's the, that's the depth of information that we were trying to collect so that uh, ultimately that clientele can be better served. So Lydia, you've obviously been well versed with the issues that face the homeless population here in the north. And since we don't yet know the results of the headcount, can you maybe give us an idea of the biggest issues and obstacles facing homeless in this community? Well, there's a number, and I think we have to first understand that so many of the people who are out on the streets are living um, huge traumas uh, in their life that has never been resolved. And so eventually, um, that's why we see so much mental illness and substance abuse connected, because oftentimes people are self-medicating for the trauma that's just too heavy for them to carry on their own. So trauma healing programs um, would be huge and uh, make a, a big difference for people. We also have uh, a number of people who come in from the outlying communities, largely because there's a lack of resources or a lack of housing, a lack of support for them out there. Um, or maybe it's the community where they lived that trauma, where they were harmed and they don't want to be there any longer. There's also a lot of people who um, meet somebody and Yellowknife seems to be the connecting point because they're in a relationship with somebody from another community and so they stay centrally in Yellowknife. So, so there's a lot of factors that bring people here. So when you have people from other communities coming to Yellowknife and then they are faced with the issue of homelessness in this city, how do you address that issue? It's obviously, it's a difficult thing, right? Because you have people who could constantly be coming from other communities. How do you deal with that? Well, it's, you know, it's key to have all orders of government, uh, NGOs, and, and the business sector working together to address this. This is something that we've been stressing for a long time, uh, that you know, this isn't a city of Yellowknife issue, it's not a, a municipal issue, it really is a territorial issue. And it's going to take uh, all orders of government, as I said, and NGOs and, and the business sector working together uh, to come up with solutions. So uh, we've stressed that to our, our territorial counterparts, and you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that you know, in the, the months and years ahead, uh, that we will be able to do a better job of, of working together to address it because you know it's clear and, and the information that, uh, that Lydia would have collected uh, during her time operating the day shelter uh, would show that you know we've we've got people coming from virtually every uh, corner of the territory to Yellowknife as Lydia said there are more programs and services available here it is a connecting point it is a hub uh, so it's going to take that that uh, ability to work together to finally address uh, address the situation and I think it's also important for uh, community Community governments, um, and not just you know the city of Yellowknife, uh, but the city of Yellowknife working in cooperation with other community governments um, to you know perhaps help those who do want to return to their home communities but don't have the means or the supports to do it uh, to look at ways of how we could actually have that happen and see reintegration in home communities. And it kind of makes you wonder if there aren't the adequate services for them in some of these communities, right? And then perhaps that's why they 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 come to Yellowknife. Uh, is for those services. But where do you think the city and territorial and federal governments, for that matter, need to, to amp it up or they need to kind of invest more or do more? Because there's no question that there's money and resources there now, but yeah. but it's clearly not meeting the target, right? So So yeah. where can we concretely put more resources in? You know, I think it's interesting, 10 years ago or 12 years ago when I first started as a city councillor, uh, we were setting our goals and objectives and we were talking about affordable housing and addressing homelessness. And there was actually a lot of pushback from the council of the day saying, you know, that's really not the city's purview. That's not something we should be uh, involved in. Uh, we have come a long way, I would say, over the last decade in, in terms of the city recognizing that it does have an important role to play. Um, certainly during uh, Lydia's time on, on city council, uh, we had very, very strong uh, efforts to start to address homelessness from the municipal level. Um, so to that end, 
you know, the city has uh, been an instrumental partner in uh, the construction of, of Bailey House, transitional housing facility for men. Uh, the new recently completed Betty House, uh, or Lynn's Place, I should call it. I always make that mm -hmm. mistake. Uh, transitional housing facility for women and women with families. Um, so we've we've been making those efforts. We've been a financial partner in the operation of the day shelter. Um, a lot of people don't know that we actually own, the city owns the side door youth center and, and covers the um, maintenance costs of that building as well. Uh, so we clearly have a role to play. Uh, but there needs to be more coordination, I think, of all of the efforts, um, and not only between governments, but between governments and NGOs and amongst the NGOs. Uh, in recent uh, months, I would say, uh, there's been more of an emphasis put on integrated case management, where we are uh, looking at all the different things that afflict people who find themselves uh, homeless and on the streets. Um, and as Lydia mentioned, you know, mental health is a major issue and addictions and self-medicating is a major issue. And yet, to a degree, I think uh, we've all kind of compartmentalized these different issues and are not treating them in a holistic fashion. And that in places where they have uh, found success in, in really addressing homelessness and its root causes, uh, that integrated holistic approach is absolutely critical. Um, and the other thing is, you know, more resources must be brought to bear. I mean, that's, that's a simple reality of the situation is that at the end of the day, we can do things smarter, uh, but we are going to need to invest more. And those, those investments are, are easily offset by savings in other sectors. The cost to the justice system, the cost to the healthcare system, we know these things are, are you know, inaction is, is costing us big in other ways. Uh, and yet we are disconnected from somehow uh, making the investments necessary to actually address the situation. You kind of bring me to my next question, and Lydia, perhaps you can weigh on in this too. I've heard people in our community say that it's not our place to be giving you know, as much resources and financial need or aid that we're giving in this present day. But, And you kind of touched on this, talking about the cost of, of prisons and the cost of health care. There is a financial justification you know, as well behind behind doing things for the homeless. And perhaps, Lydia, you can touch on that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, recently, the Mental Health Commission of Canada did a five-year pilot project called um, At Home Chez Soi. And in that five years, it was focused on, in five communities, on Housing First projects. And in five years, they saw the, stable, they saw the stabilization of people in their own homes at a low barrier rate, it was okay if they were still drinking, but as people became stabilized, they drank less, they sought more help, they become employable. And so um, they saw huge savings in those five communities in policing, courts, justice, and health. So we already know that that works. In fact, sometimes I wonder why we're not doing it everywhere. I'm a I'm a homeowner in Yellowknife and a municipal taxpayer. I'm not looking for my municipal taxes to pay for the services that we're talking about here today because I want good roads, water and sanitation and that's what municipal taxes really are about. But I do look to the territorial and federal government to um, address the issues. I always say, you know, there's enough money. We're just not investing it very well. We have wait lists for childcare, we have wait lists for housing, we have wait lists for home care, um, for health care, but we don't have any wait lists for jail. You're going in, if, if it's your time to go in, they will find room for you. If it's overcrowded, they will still get you in. So we need to stop back um, and funding things and funding up front in the early intervention programs, in early childhood intervention, and the things that will make a difference. And so right now we're in the middle of a 40-year plan by the federal government to get out of funding public housing. and. It, midway through the plan, we're already at a crisis. I don't know what's going to happen in the next 20 years. We can barely bear it now, and it's only going to get worse. So somebody needs to step forward and make a 40-year plan to create housing and affordable housing options. Back about 25 or 26 years ago when I came to Yellowknife, the YWCA was operating what was equivalent to a hostel, some really low-cost uh, temporary housing. Uh, back when I started on council and Mark was there, there was a housing project called the Third Millennium in Cam Lake, where an individual was running housing, again, for people coming and going transient and very low cost. But we don't have any of those low cost um, hostel options, and we're still missing many other pieces of the um, home housing continuum.